camera's rolling. Phylum mollusca, definitely, if not my favorite, definitely top two favorite animal phyla. Definitely my favorite dissections. We're gonna do the dissection tomorrow of a mollusk, but first we need to dive into our friend the cladogram. There we are. Phylum mollusca. Everybody find phylum mollusca. Have your uh, sorry, I told you to flip your cladogram. Flip it back to the cladogram part. So look at the cladogram part, and let's let's fire off some homologous traits, shall we? Boom! There they are. Yeah. Remember, we have this one already in black. Everybody here, pretty much everybody other than the Porifera and Phylum Nidaria, have bilateral symmetry, with the exclusion of a kind of dermotic, because they're weirdos. We'll get to them later. We should have bilateral symmetry here on the line, at least all those, yes? Hold on, hold on. For Platyhelminthus, they have an A coelum. They have an A coelum, which is what? What's the word A coelum mean? Am I wrong? Is it like no body cavity? No body cavity is correct. No body cavity is correct. So they have an A coelum, which means they have a no body cavity. Make sure you guys get that as a homologous trait for platyhelminthus. On top of that, what is in the middle of their body? Ooh. What is in the middle of their body? Fluid. No. Dang. Their butt mouth. Yes, their butt mouth. Specifically, the pH word. The pharynx? Yes, the pharynx is located at mid-body. So for platyhelminthus, you should have no body cavity. That's an acelum. And the pharynx at mid body. Pharynx at mid body. Now everyone down here, and also these, have what kind of <coughs> digestive system? What kind of digestive system? A one-way one digestive. Oh, like it says right there. One-way digestive system. A one-way digestive tract, also known as a complete digestive system. So where is this one? At? That one goes on. Everybody, everybody, but platyhelminthus. Right. Your mollusks, your guinea tails, your annelids, your arthropods. While we're here, before we do mollusca, tell me nematodes, what do they have going on? What do they have going on? <coughs> false body cavity. False body cavity. Does anybody remember the name for a false body cavity? What's our word for false body cavity? Lurgan? Pseudocelum. Pseudocelum, like it says right here, pseudo meaning false. Coelum meaning body cavity, so they have a pseudo coelum. Did you write that down for nematodes? Pseudo coelum. No, I need your assistance. Everybody here has got organs and stuff. That purple just goes right on the line for nematoda. Right on the line for nematoda. Make sure at the end of that line is nematoda. And then, annelids, what do annelids have that separates them from arthropods? What do annelid worms have? Segmented worms, what do they have, Michaela? A pharynx that comes out of the mouth. Yes, they've got the whole like pharynx that comes like out of the mouth, sometimes even got teeth on it. <coughs> or it looks like veins. Pharynx that comes out of the mouth. The technical terminology for that is a pharynx that protrudes through the mouth. It means it sticks out the mouth. Gross. Now notice what kind of what kind of body cavity do these have? What kind of cavity do these have? And they have one that's filled with fluid. A fluid-filled body cavity, aka a true body cavity. What's the word for a true body cavity? A ucelum. A Now notice though, it's not written on the line for annelid. It's back here. Because both annelids and arthropods have a true body cavity and segmented bodies. Whoa. Whoa, dude. P.S. So do we. So there might be some other yeah. things happening in Branch Town. Some of these traits may have evolved sort of weirdly. But anyway, these are some pretty good homologous traits for this part of the cladogram. Questions? Comments, concerns, warnings, dangers, Will Robinson. What? All the way down from All right. Range.
conspicuous features. Are you prepared? No. Oh. no but let's yes. Do All right. Flip it over to the note side first. Worth mentioning, there are over 50,000 species identified in Phylum Mollusca. We're not going down to the species level. We're definitely not going to talk about 50,000 different mollusks today, that's for sure. We're going to get down like like class. We're going to talk about some of the classes in this phylum. We're going to talk about a few orders in this phylum. Like octopi, that's most likely a whole order, maybe a family. Definitely not getting anywhere near the species level of specificity. All mollusks have very soft, soft bodies. Very soft, very vulnerable. Keep in mind, this is also why we wrote down some of those card traits, because some of these are going to appear in the card traits. Connor? Isn't that how come they're so malleable? Because they really don't have bones in there? Yeah, there's no bones in there. They're, they have a hydrostatic skeleton, which means they're really floppy and loosey-goosey. On top of that, they don't even have those segmented body walls like this, like the earthworms had, right? So they're even more flexible than the worms. So they could, even if they get stuck on under like a giant rock or it gets dropped on them, they can just squeeze their way out? Uh, some can, some can't, because most of them have a protective layer called the mantle. And when we trade protection, the trade-off is we're losing some of that flexibility now. So we've got this protective layer called is a mantle. And that's going to be a little less flexible, a little more. But here's the thing, uh, for those of you thinking like, what is, how is the thing over top of my fireplace going to protect anyone? It's not that kind of mantle. Instead, back in olden times when you would like ride horses to get to places, okay, 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 okay. <laughs> right? You're riding the horse and there's like tree branches hitting you and there's like muck from other horses. So you have these really thick, like, like cape type things, thick, hard leather called a mantle. So you throw that on, right? Don your mantle. You throw on this like really heavy duty leather cape thing and use that to protect yourself from the branches and usually have like a little hood or something even. Cloak would be like for warmth and for like, you know, covering your identity. Mantle is like thicker, a little more sturdy, heavy duty, right? You see what I'm saying? So they, they have that. Now those of them that have a shell, that shell is secreted by the mantle. So if they don't have a mantle, they definitely don't have a shell. If they have a shell, guess what they definitely have? A mantle. And yes, you see it again. Like my favoriteest ion in the ocean, calcium carbonate. Yes, the same calcium carbonate that made up the skeletons of coral and the skeletons of calcareous sponges. Which means this needs to be readily available in the water and or part of their diet. Think of all the terrestrial snails with their calcium carbonate shell. They gotta eat that ion as part of their diet in order to have it for making their shell. It's also what chalk's made out of. It's also what limestone's made out of. So, you know, pretty important stuff. All mollusks have a muscular foot that they use for locomotion. I want you to think of the motion of your foot, right? That like digging, pushing thing that a foot does, right? For, that digging, pushing, that's how they move. They dig in and they push. That's why we call it a foot. What does it exactly look like? And then, I'll show you. And then we have a radula for feeding. Now these ones should be written down from your sortie card traits. Right, radula for feeding. Someone look at the sortie card traits and tell me what is a radula? What is a radula? Isn't it a big tongue-like device they use to feed off of anything they come across? In yeah, the except the tongue-like device also tends to have teeth on it. How can a tongue have teeth on it? Yeah, yeah. You thought it was pretty bad when you were looking at like that tube in the back of your throat having teeth. Imagine your tongue has teeth on it. Ugh. Imagine you have to get braces for the teeth tongue. Ooh. Ooh. Whoa. And they're incredibly Ooh. painful. You want to see a picture? Yes. Yeah. I thought you would. Of course. Is that what it is? Here it is. Here it is. So it's tongue and then see the teeth. Do you see the teeth? Looks like right. a slinky. <laughs> you look like a slinky. Oh. See the teeth? Now wait, let me let me give you perspective here. This is a snail, okay? This is the head of the snail. 
Here's the foot and the rest of the body of the snail going on this way. So we're zoomed in pretty far. Here's its mouth and the right, uh, pharynx just sticking out, ready to lob some stuff with its tooth tongue. <laughs> Not so bad. Can you tell me like what Blah. parts of it or what, like which parts of the tongue, which parts of the... <laughs> hmm. That whole big old honker. What, what's the teeth and what's the tongue? I don't the know. teeth are the grooves. Outside. And all the, all the rest of that is the tongue? Well, the, the tongue has the teeth on it. Well, the hole in the middle is like the pharynx. Everything is... Oh, gotcha. Uh, gotcha. Gotcha. On top of that, many of them have specialized feeding appendages. So a lot of snails, in addition to that radulas, if that wasn't frightening enough, they've got these like little squiggly shove stuff towards the mouth appendages, like Dr. Zoiberg style. Don't know who that is, but that's crazy. Exactly. So we've got specialized feeding appendages. These are more common when you're looking at ones that are also highly cephalized. Which means what? What's cephalization? Who wants to remind me? E. Connor. No. Caden. Cephalization. Something to do with the head. Something to do with the head. What gets concentrated in the head? Oh. What gets concentrated in the head? Tissue. No. What tissue? All the nerves. All the nerves. The majority of the nervous system concentrated in the head. In fact, these are so highly cephalized that for the first time, we get to see a brain. Not little dotty, dumb ganglion. I'm talking a full-on, giant, massive, intelligent brain. Do these, some of those specialized feeding pinches include beaks? Yes. Although and that's really more the radula. And aren't some usually like cephalopods, like octopus and stuff, very intelligent? Yes. <laughs> yes, they are. Here's a, here's a picture of one octopus. If you had more than one of these, you could call it an octopi. Octopus. Now, look at this, though. This whole thing is not the head. All right? This, this is their body. This is all inside what we call the mantle cavity. I don't like that. <laughs> See how I said it all slow and emphatic? It means you should write it down. Mantle cavity, that's where they store all their organs and whatnot. However, in octopi and slugs, they lose their mantle in adulthood, which means these ones are soft, squishy, squiggly. This right here, there's your head. And then see the big old honking eyeballs? See the feeding appendages? Wait, Eight arms so used head, for feeding. The head so, is on top of so the head's right here, then the body. So if they're, if they're like upright, right, their body's up, imagine you're standing on your head. So their tentacles are like their hair? And their tentacles would be like their hair, except if you used your hair to shove food in your mouth. Mm, and then up inside there, their radula has been modified into a beak. Looks just like a parrot's beak. Think like a, like a pair of garden pruners, right, that have blades on both ends with the overbite. Specifically designed to cut things that are hard, you know, like bones. Oh. So I want you to picture this. You get grabbed by a big old honking octopus. You're a fish probably. And you get grabbed by this big old honking octopus, and it's going to grab it with those feeding appendages and hold it up there to the beak while it just rips tiny pieces of it until that thing finally dies and gets all swallowed. Or like just it. takes a crab and cracks the shell, right? Mm -hmm. no, Sam, I got to sign it and stuff still. In Asia, they eat octopus raw sometimes. Yep. And I saw a video recently of a girl who was trying to do that, and it hooked itself onto her face and oh. tore a hole in her face. Yeah. It was oh. alive? Oh. Yeah, they eat them raw. And that's why you oh, eat that's food cool that's dead. Yeah. Well, it and tastes it's better. Because my it's fried really chicken has never tried to kill me. <laughs> you ripped the whole thing. My KFC. Yeah, yeah my KFC is not a killer. Those are suckers. Those are suckers. They're kind of like serrated. Like on the suckers. Some are, some are. Because when they grab on you, that's why they leave marks like that. Well, they, they leave marks for suction. But like bleeding marks, because I looked at the edge of a squid's kind of mostly kind of. Some do, some don't. Surface area is what they're going for, so most of them aren't really sharp. Wait. I've seen a video of an octopus. Um, there was a crab inside of a bottle, and he literally like squeezed himself inside the whole bottle just to eat him, and then got back in. 
Yeah, because because they don't have the mantle, they're very flexible. The only hard part is the beak. That means, all right, so if you got an octopus that's like yay big or so, it might have a beak like yay big. That means any hole this size it can get in. Uh, it can squeeze through anything that its beak can that. fit through. Very squishy, very floppy. On top of that, they also have a really crazy hydrostatic skeleton. So as long as, like, you know, this arm's a certain size, right? Mm -hmm. But as long as the total volume is conserved, they can change their arm in just about any shape because they don't have joints or bones or any of that. They've got a very strong, very muscular hydrostatic skeleton. On top of that, that big old brain, real, real, real smart. Real smart. There was some trapped in like an like aquarium, think of like an industrial operation, right? You know, if you have fish, you need like a little bubbler, right, to oxygenate it. Like finding a newer. Yeah, yeah. So imagine like the industrial version of that, right? And also like to replace water, filter, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, they have these octopi in a tank. They're sitting there and they're like, all right, I see how this works. Disassembled the whole apparatus, un, like undid the pipe fittings. You know, the ones that they took a wrench to? Just undid it with their arms here until they got to the part of the pipe big enough that they could, and then just squeezed through the pipe to get out of the tank. Where would they go from there? Wherever the pipes lead. Hopefully to freedom. We should, we should teach. But they can't breathe there, can they? We should teach. No, they need to be underwater. But, yeah, oh uh, wait, it gets better, but we'll talk about that there, because they've got something way better than sign language. But first, let's talk about a basal group, a basal group of mollusks called polyphacophora. Like that. AKA chitons. AKA. Now, before I show you a picture one, tell me what does poly <coughs> mean? Many. What does poly mean? Who'd like Jaden's points? Oh, oh take them, Brandon. Man, take poly them. means many. No, he took them. I can't more. believe he took them. Well, see, you lost more. <laughs> poly means many. What is in many is their shell pieces. They have a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight part shell. Those eight parts are called valves, and they, can, they sort of overlap and they can sort of move them a little bit. This is like the marine equivalent of having like body armor. That's cool. Who's, what part of their body secreted this calcium carbonate shell? The part that has the... The, the, the middle, like I don't... The, it does the start with the letter the M. Yes, the mantle. Yeah. The mantle secreted the shell. Here's it from the top down. Notice it's nice and colorful. These are designed for like, or, or these evolved to live in warm, shallow water, right? Blend in with the coral, right? Blend in with the sponges. Here it is on the bottom. Ooh. This is that same one. Right, right here, this is the foot, that big muscular foot, right? We talk about how it uses this to just push to move. Guess what that is? A thumb. Next to the thumb, silly. There's the mouth with the radula that'll come like out of it, yeah, which means the anus is somewhere back in here. And all this around it is the mantle. So you got that mantle, that protective layer mantle, secreted that shell, right? Here's your foot, mouth, anus will be back here at the end. Notice on the sides, see the feathery gills, that's for breathing. They tend to keep their gills... If best they can, they like to keep their gills outside of the mantle cavity, right? Because those need water flowing through them. They need to sort of flop them around, move them. Um, don't ammonites and nautiluses belong to this group? Yes. Well, not not this group, but well, this this phylum. We'll get there. Here we have the general body plan. You can see right the mantle cavity. Do you see the mantle cavity? Where it put all its internal organs, right? Food comes in here, right? You got the mouth. Notice, just like we saw in the nematodes, they've got that nerve ring. So in the basal, in the basal groups of mollusks, they have a lot more in common with nematodes. They got a nice mantle cavity, so they're a little more developed, right? They've got some organs like we have, right? Digestive tract, anus out the back, right? Keep the food and the poop as far away from each other as you can. Good strategy. Is a clam this kind of animal? Is that what it likes? No, is? this is a chitin. Dang. Wait for it. Because the, the next one is bivalves. Oh, and I that's know. where we're going to see our scallops, our clams, our mussels, all of which are delicious. 
very true. Yeah, now, no, polyplacophora has many pieces to the shell. How many pieces to the shells of a bivalve? Two. Two. They're called bivalves because you can move them, right? So each half of the shell, that is a valve of the shell. Here's a picture of one. See how we has one and two valves? All right, check out these big beefy muscles here. You see those? Those are called adductor muscles. Guess what those do? They adduct. Yeah, what's that mean? Ooh. Ooh. Opening close like the shell. Which one is it? Adducting is... <coughs> Closing. Oh, Closing. Look at, look at my arms here. I'll make sure I'm in the frame. Look at my arms here, right? If I abduct my arms, this is abduction. So I move them away from my body. Abduct. To move them towards my body, this is adduct. So the shell, they relax those muscles and it'll go open. And then they can just, I mean, look at these. These are beefy. Beefy. Right? Just like me. They can clamp that thing shut. Predators are trying to get at their soft body parts inside here. Just clamp it shut. And then they've got, like, you know, they're using those adductor muscles. And maybe it's like an arthropod. They're like, prying, like, and like, no, I keep it shut. How do they eat? How do they eat? Because this right here is not the mouth. This right here is not the mouth. How do they eat? Are they filter feeders? They're filter feeders. What is the pearl in the clams? Oh, see, you held up one finger like you were going to answer my question and then you asked it. And then I did this. That's, that's a violation. Snake. That's a violation. Hold on, let me, let me first answer my question, then I'll get to your question. Wait, stop, no. Filter feeders, what they do, they stick out two siphons. One is the in-current siphon, pulls water in, right? They're going after the plankton, the floaty bits. The other one, X-current siphon, pushes water out. They can flop these siphons however they like. So what they like to do, close this whole, close both valves, right? They're closed, they're, they <coughs> flop the siphons out, filter feed, right? Then they're protected, they can just flop the siphon out. The only time they'll open like this is if they're trying to move around. So here's one, here's a clam, and, and we, took, we took one valve off. See the nice feathery gills, right? You might open that up to breathe too, right? Open it up, let the gills get some more access to water. Again, you have your mantle that secretes that nice hard shell. The siphons are in here somewhere, but that might be part of one. See the foot here? The foot, within the foot, that's where you have the mantle cavity. So if you cut open the foot, then you'll find all the organs and everything else. But what they'll do is they'll open that valve, they'll stick out their foot, and then they can sort of like dig in the sand a little bit. They can push, they can push, right? They can dig in the sand. What they really like to do, dig a little hole, get down in there, close your little top valve, right? Now you can't really see them. They just stick the siphon up there and feed. That's kind of cool. Hidden and safe from predators. Do they have eyes? What's that? Do they have eyes? No eyes. How do they know where they're going? They don't. So they just wander. This, they just sort wander of, they the feel it out. They feel it out. Oh, so they're basically they're like, their best yeah. They feel it out. They're not cephalized enough for, for a brain. I mean, look at this. It's like indiscriminate goop. Oh, yeah. Here's those <laughs> adductor muscles. Now, some species of these, Caden, to answer your question, if like sand gets in here, starts like irritating their gills and whatnot. They can actually encase that sand in layer after layer after layer of calcium carbonate, same stuff the shell's made of. But it's, you know, it's mixed with some other stuff, right? The abalone, right? You know, that's our, like, general word abalone? for it. It's pretty, right? So people are just basically buying sand. People are buying sand encased in a clamshell. Yeah. Is that where all so pearls come from? So break up and is it really hard sand? Like no, no, like, like specks of sand. They, they encase it. They put those layers on there. They put those layers on there. And they're expensive because uh, they're relatively rare. Not every clam species makes them, and even of those, not every one of those makes them. It's not all pearls. There's also synthetic pearls. If it's like perfectly round and pretty uniform in color, that was probably made in a factory somewhere. <coughs> you shouldn't pay a lot for it. Real pearls, much harder to find, so they're much more expensive. And you tell those because the color won't be all the same, even throughout, and pearl to pearl. They'll be different sizes a little bit. They won't be perfectly round, even. Anyway, check this sucker out. Oh, oh. what the? This is, this is the gooey duck. Gooey duck. The gooey duck. 
It's a bivalve. See the shell? Yeah. Yeah. This is the siphons. This is see the big muscle. Look at it, it's squirting water out of its X current siphon right there. This would be the in current, right, to pull stuff in. Just giant. This is so it's traded, right? It clearly isn't going to get that inside its valves for protection, but it's traded all that muscle, all that strength in the siphon for the ability to like protect itself. So remember, everything natural selection, it's always a trade-off, right? Yep. Okay. Gastropoda. Here you got your snails, your slugs that don't have a mantle anymore. Your sea hares, your limpets. Here's a snail. Snail. That picture I showed you, that was the radula right up here, right? So you got your foot, you got all your organs up here in the mantle cavity, all stored real nice, protected by this shell. It goes all the way back. I mean, they've got organs stretching all the way back to the tip there. These do have eyes. So you can do like a little submarine thing. They can be like doodle 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 woo, doo doodle 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 Pushes around with their foot. Like, is there a certain way they get their color, like, in their shell and, like, the shape of the shell? Yeah. The shape of the shell is crazy. The shape of the, of the shell actually follows the same uh, mathematical expression that defines the next uh, prime number in the series. What? Also, that's the same shape that a rhino's horn grows at and the same shape that birds of prey take on their, like, spiral down and murder things. Yeah, math is crazy. Can't they, snails specifically, breathe both air and water? Uh, some can, some cannot. Because I often find some outside of my, the water in my grandmother's pond. They yeah, I mean, sit they, there. They, they like moist conditions, but most of them, like, look at their internal anatomy. Most of them have lungs instead of gills. Because these go both underwater and can come out of the rocks on top. Yeah, I mean, you, you, you can go underwater, right? No, they stay there for a long time. Dark sack. Yeah, turtles do that too, right? Dark sack. Longer than turtle hands. Whales. Dart. Some of them will have lungs, but some of them might have gills, but this one has lungs. Why did slugs lose their mantle? Like, why don't they have mantle? So they can squish around under stuff. However, that's also the reason why you put salt on them. They die right away. They shrivel all up. Anyway, yeah. That's snail. All their organs up in there. Notice again, we've got some more brain-like stuff because we got to run real eyes. That's going to take a lot more processing power than a crappy little eye spot. They're still not quite getting into brain territory, but definitely way more cephalized than we've seen so far. Except, it, oh yeah, see hair. These have gills. It's the, the marine version. Look at that shape. Why is it that shape? Why is it that color? It looks like I don't so know. So it can fit in with coral. So it can fit in with coral, other rocks, stuff of the seafloor. Like right? As long as it's not moving, a predator might just go like, ah, coral, 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 lame, lame, lame. It looks like my mom's batch of cookies. Wow. Let me tell your mom you said that. That's on YouTube and everything. That's cool. All right, here's their common ancestor. You got gastropods. See, see the internal organs? This one, Connor, has gills. See this one right here? See how we've got the same internal organs? They're just like a little bit straighter line here. Which means it's finally time to talk about the cephalopods. Which, like Connor asked, this is where we find our nautiluses and our ammonites. <coughs> it's also where we find octopi and squiddies and cuttlefish. Check that sucker out. Beautiful, yeah? Yeah. 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 It's a good word. Look at how big its eyeballs are. This is what is called a complex eye. We have a complex eye. Theirs is better. Their eyes specifically designed to see underwater, right? We have to have this whole like filter layer on it. What that means is they can see a lot clearer image than we ever could hope to. They will see you before you ever see them. You got a big old brain in here in their mouth. They got the beak right up there. All their internal organs back here, and also look at all those pretty colors. Party. Can't pretty full. Can't see in the dark. Yeah. Here's some cuttlefish. Oh, right. See? Do you see the? Do you see the mantle right here? See the mantle? See these feeding appendages? Right. Giant eyeball again. These are all cephalopods. Big old, big old brain. Super smart. Squid. We're gonna cut one of these up. Here's your friend, the squid. This is the ventral side, dorsal side right here with a, with a big structure. They have an internal shell called a pen. Think like a tent, right, with a big like, post up the middle to give it a shape. They've got that. Look at how long their body tube is, right? 
These things are designed for speed, right? They've even got fins to help them like steer and really like cut through the water. These ones all can move with jet propulsion, right? They've got a little siphon down here. Unlike the clams that use it for like feeding, they use their siphon for going like With this big long body tube, these are designed to have a high top speed. Cuttlefish are kind of medium, or no, cuttlefish are kind of slow. Octopi are kind of medium. Here's the crazy thing. When they do their jet, they build up so much pressure inside their mantle cavity that an octopi, it actually stops their hearts from beating for a moment. That's how hard they pew when they pew. They, they swim, they can sprint so hard, there's so much force there, stops their hearts from beating. Whoa. Just like, I've seen cuttlefish, they're not fast movers, but they are quick with their strikes. Mm -hmm. But like, can all three of those change color? Yes. How come giant squid well, can? What are they doing here? What are they doing in the ink? Well, I mean, well, I'll, we'll talk about that in a second. But first, we should talk about probably the coolest defense. You see these spots? See those stripes? See all that? They're covered in cells called chromatophores. Oh, wait. Those chromatophores are a giant, like, cluster of cells. They can change color. They can change size. And on top of that, they've got a reflective, like, little underlining. They can change the level of reflectivity. So they can change their color, pattern, and how bright all that is. On top of that, octopi, because they don't have that mantle, they can actually change the texture of their skin. Whoa. That's That's cool. Check this out. Check this out. Show us. Watch this. All right. Where's see, the octopus? See this clump of, like, whatever? All right. Watch this clump of whatever. That's an octopus. That's gonna come from behind it. It's a whole octopus next to it. It's next to it. That's not an octopus. Oh my gosh. Yeah, didn't see that one coming, did you? Oh my gosh! Wait, can you play again? That's actually one of the coolest things I've ever seen in my life. Look at this. Like, you think it's like up here, don't you? You think it's like up here. I see it. There it is. I see its tentacle right there. Yep. Hey man! Oh my gosh! Bro, that is so cool. That's so cool. So they blanch white yeah. when they're scared, but then you saw that ink spray come out, right? So right, they're blending in, they're like, crap, I'm discovered! So then they spray ink, right? That blinds, right, big smoke screen, and then they pew, hold their breath, because their hearts aren't even beating. They go off super fast, and then, real quick, set down over here, change color again. That's actually one of the coolest things. Here. Right? <laughs> I didn't right? Think that now. Was. Let's look at these cells. Check them out. So, cool. so here they are, and they can actually like uh, like not just change color, but look, they change size. Ooh. Right? They can change pattern. They're basically three colors: black, red, and yellow. So basically, like the cells can change size, but does it cause the octopus to grow, or does it give it the illusion that it's growing bigger? Well, so here's the thing, as long as the volume is the same, they can t put their arm in pretty much any shape. No, like as long as the total, shh, as long as the total volume is the same, right? Like, like my arm, this part of my arm is always going to be this size because of the bone in it, right? But what if I can make it like this size, or longer and skinnier? As long as the total volume is the same, they can pretty much do whatever. Which also means, not only do they give the appearance of having a different texture, they can actually change to have a different texture. So Watch like this. A... Watch this. Not only can they like, get in there right, look what it does. Look at the... <gasps> oh. So they can actually have like a form of shape-shifting? Uh-huh. Oh my god. On top of that, look, they can also walk on their arms. <laughs> right? If they don't need to jet around real fast, they can just walk on their arms. It's just like this, hopping around. This one's like, you know, you know like in the cartoons where they put like the box or like the container oh, over them, they're like, don't mind us, just a, just a, I'm just a rock, don't mind me. It's basically what that means. Then like something keeps looking over like, <laughs> they'll, <laughs> they'll also, they'll use their color change, just way better than sign language, they will use the color changing to communicate with each other. Remember those two cuttlefish that were mating? Mm -hmm. They'll have that, like they'll have a whole conversation by changing colors. And in most cuttlefish, it's kind of like this reddish color. That's like the version of like, sup. <laughs> <laughs> I saw a cuttlefish that were communicating. They were like changing the whole colors of the rainbow all at once. Yep. It was blinding. Yeah. Uh, that's so cool. Yeah. So the, so yeah. 
not only is this good for avoiding predators, but imagine how terrifying this would be as a predator. If they were suddenly just like they're just they're just chilling, stuff. just chilling, just <laughs> chilling. All of a sudden, like, oh, I got eight arms for you. Wait. So, what are the animals that hunt for octopi? Like nothing. So that that that's the thing. Like like anything bigger could try and hunt them. But even so, they had a there's a case study. They had all these dogfish sharks. So they're about this big, but I mean, it's a it's a top tier predator, the dogfish. They had a whole tank full of dogfish. And in that tank, they had dogfish and a little octopi, like, like this big octopi. And the dogfish were just dying like crazy. So they're trying to figure out, like, like what's killing them? Like, they're like, checking like bacteria and like protist levels. Like, no, the water's got enough oxygen. Like, we don't understand what's going on. They put a video camera on there, just watch. And the octopi, like, just for fun, they're just like murdering sharks left and right. Oh, <laughs> I think I saw that. It sharks like way a... bigger than them, just ripping them apart. Yeah, I think I saw some of those, like a kind of octopus medium size. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it was a dogfish, but it was a medium sized shark. Just snatched it out in the air and bit oh, its yeah. head off with its beak. Yep. Yeah. That's and then, if you account for the fact that, like, the colossal <coughs> squid is, like, bigger than two or three of me. Uh, uh. Yeah. Oh, no. You, you know what giant squid are? Colossal squid, I think, are, like, twice the size of that. Oh, my it's God. So it's, uh, yeah, no, no fun. All right. The rest, the rest of this video...